Hi there, everybody. This is Moduli Stack. The patch just came out today. Master League just came out today. And this is one of the games that I played in my attempt to qualify for Master League. This is not the game that finally pushed me over. Um, that game was terrible. My opponent didn't know how to play Protoss. Uh, he did this build that we sometimes call a three warp gate expand, where you make a lot of sentries and expand. And he thought those sentries were supposed to be used to walk over and try to kill Zerg. And so he just lost all of his sentries for no reason. Didn't make a lot of sense to me. Anyway, this is a Zerg versus Zerg. I am here at the top as the blue Zerg um, moduli stack. Myself, me, the one talking, and over here at the bottom as the red Zerg, we have Alex. Nice and short and simple and meaningful name. Maybe it's his name. Maybe it's somebody else's name. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary coming out of the two Zerg players right now making drones. Oh, interesting early scout from me. Uh, it's quite early. Oh, I have to remember I changed the button for doing this little smooth scrolly thing. Oh, no. I'm, I'm having frame rate problems. Just a second. Let me close some things that might be causing that. There we go. All right, now, continuing onwards. Still resolving a lot of technical details in these casts, so do bear with me. It will continue to improve over time. I do scout him, and I see that he's not doing anything unusual, and I even think he might be going for this hatchery first, so I am going to go for that hatchery first as well. Um, I'm always a little annoyed when I see this, when I see Zerg players going for a blind hatchery first. Um... Yeah, it's good economy. Yeah, you can defend against anything but a six pool, but you're, you're not going to defend the six pool. I mean, it's almost like he's saying, well, you, you have an early drone scout here. You must be thinking about hatch first, so I'll hatch first. Anyway, it just, it just bugs me. It just seems kind of unfair. Like, if I had just six pooled, he, I just would have easily won this game. Um, <laughs> of course, you can't go back in six pool, so... Just going to keep playing on, both of us getting our pool and our gas. Probably going to see Zergling speed first out of both players. Um, so this matchup is interesting, and these positions are especially interesting for this matchup because we're quite far from each other. So there's actually a little bit of opportunity to play a macro game. Now, uh, a lot of people really dislike this matchup. I think they find it a bit... Um, uh, fast and furious, and especially when there's a lot of banelings involved, it can come down to a few tiny micro mistakes. And um, anyway, there's just a, a lot of um, a lot of complaints whenever I run into people on custom games. I don't know, they just say, "No, please don't play Zerg. Please play another race. I don't like Zerg." Zerg. So people just uh, often feel very strongly about this matchup. But I think there's a lot of great things that can happen in the mid and late game um, in Zerg versus Zerg. I think a lot of the problem is that a lot of Zergs these days are, are their openings are a little bit unstable. See that I am opting to get a, a pretty solid handful of Zerglings early, a little bit light on the drones. Looking at the Harvester tab, um, I am one behind at this point only though, because he has gone for this Roach Warren and um, and a double Queen. I guess I got my second Queen a lot slower than he did. Um, so that's where our respective monies went. Unfortunately, I do a bad job with my Zerglings. I run out with them. I should really keep them here if I don't want to attack immediately. I kind of wanted to put some pressure on him, but it's probably not going to happen at this distance. So he does run up and see everything I am doing, namely that I'm not doing anything. And that's really useful information for him, actually, because it means um, he can expect a little bit more of a commitment to Zerglings. He knows that if I'm making a Roach Warren, it's going to be a lot later than his. Um, and we'll see how he chooses to react to that exactly. But he is getting his four Roaches out. This is a critical timing for a, a Roach-type build. Um, I, I wouldn't do a Roach build in close positions after fast expanding because um, Zerglings... Oh, I, I rallied in some Zerglings badly there, so gave him some free ones. Anyway, um, this build was very, very vulnerable until just this moment when he does get those roaches out. Um, I am going to be pushing out here. Um, not exactly sure why I got this spine crawler after getting a lot of zerglings. I could have delayed that a lot. Um, meantime, um, let's see. Probably going to see. Oh, well, zergling speed is out. I, I 
wasn't paying attention to the zooming speed timings. He's going to run a bunch of speed zergs in here. Not going to do anything. I've got a pretty great position. Um, I think I've scattered his um, roaches at this point, but I'm not sure. I certainly should think about poking in here sometime soon. Um, incidentally, I'm going for this plus one melee upgrade. I really like doing this um, against roaches when I'm planning on relying on zerglings. Um, plus one attack zerglings are so good against roaches. Um, you see that a roach has, let's see, one armor, 145 life. Zergling does, uh, let me pause for this little bit of analysis. Zergling does five damage. So it takes 19 hits from a zergling. No, 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 I'm sorry. That does, it'll do four damage to a roach. So um, uh, 37 hits from a uh, non-upgraded zergling. And that will go down to, what, 19? Could those numbers possibly be, uh, possibly be correct? Um, uh, 29. 37, yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> 37 goes down to 29 hits, so huge improvement in damage um, from that plus one attack upgrade uh, against the roaches. So I just, I, I really like to do that um, in, in this matchup if I'm going zerglings and I see roaches. I don't go zerglings that often usually in this matchup. I kind of go through phases um, in zerg versus zerg, honestly, where I'll just decide my reaction time isn't very good and I'll start making, doing roach builds and or do like this game where I'll say, I'm gonna get a bunch of zerglings and if he's not ready for me, I'm just gonna run him over and surround him and out micro him. That's not gonna happen though. He is quite well secured with these roaches. Notice a few on the ramp to prevent run buys. Um, there's still some room for me to pick off drones here. I think I, um, I might've missed it earlier, but I think I did do some harassment around here earlier. Um, so there's some room for me to harass there, but he can easily pull these drones back and move these guys around. So really nice way to set up when you only have a few roaches. Notice he is going for a baneling nest. This is uh, because I think he figured out that I'm making a lot of zerglings and not much else. Um, am getting my lair. This is quite a late lair. Uh, I took guys off gas even for a while. I wanted to get that economy going really well. And um, I guess it didn't do that great a job because I am behind by 10 harvesters. Um, uh, hopefully, I'll be correcting that in a little bit. Uh, of course, you can keep a lower uh, drone count when you're doing what I'm doing, namely heavy zerglings, and um, I'm going to be going into some mutalisks. Uh, having this, a super high drone count isn't as important as when you're going for mass roach. I mean, still, I should be making some drones pretty soon. Um, but you'll see what I'm going to really do with my map control. And I do have map control here because these, this plus one is done. I have a ton of zerglings out. He cannot move out with these uh, roach numbers, uh, I don't think. It would be a big risk for him. He would be very vulnerable to counterattacks. And honestly, um, what I have is going to do pretty well against what he has, I think. Uh, of course, uh, that's one of the reasons he's gone for this Banely Nest. I uh, forgot about that. Um, Right, I'm, I'm going to lose my map control, basically, because um, he is getting these banelings out. And this is a, a really nice idea. It's something I've thought about a bit with my own roach openings, where if your opponent goes for heavy, heavy zerglings, it's sometimes very hard to push out, but this is an excellent solution to that problem. Um, just go into banelings and still rely on your large roach numbers. But I don't know, he's kind of making a lot of banelings. I don't know how I feel about this many banelings. If you just have a few, that is enough to deter large armies of lings, so might not be necessary. Oh, a uh, few of those going off. I think I lost a few too many guys there. Yeah, that was not so great for me at all. But um, catching up a little bit in the harvester count. Did I pick off some of his? Oh, no, he must have built some stuff. So what is he building? He is building his third hatchery. I've had my third hatchery for a while, and I'm making a fourth hatchery at an expansion. So, um... Still behind in the drone count, but I have my mutalisks out, and I have really good, check out my vision here, I have really good spread of my overlords. Well, okay, not, not the best in the world spread of my overlords, but I have vision of a whole bunch of his overlords, so I'm just gonna go to town, and um, I don't even know what that expression means. I guess it's like shopping for stuff in town, like gonna go to town and, I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't really understand the expressions I'm using. So um, I'm gonna kill a lot of overlords is the point. And uh, looking at the production tab, he is now only able to make overlords and he is making eight of them. Uh, and spore crawlers, cause he's very scared of uh, this, these mutalisks. Of course, I only have five at the moment. But um, 
I'm interestingly enough going to decide to basically play this out as though my opponent is a turtling Terran. Um, I'm just going to sort of take map control. Looking at the Harvester count, I have managed to pull into the lead in Harvesters, and I am going to continue to do so. Um, and I'm one base up. So um, more Mutalisks. Now he, uh, as well as... Um, see, has he got an extra queen? He's gotten an extra queen, at least. And some spore crawlers. And besides that, he's also going for hydralisks. It feels like he really needs those to push out. And he is right, because if this he moves out with these banelings and roaches, uh, he's going to take a lot of damage before he actually gets up to my base. Uh, so he's getting those hydralisks. And um, not taking too much damage there. I'm doing a pretty good job with mutilus control. I have not lost any to carelessness. And I'm gathering up a nice group here. Of course, the thing is, I feel like uh, Zerg has fewer weak points for Mutalus Karras than Terrans do. Um, spore Crawlers are nice. Queens are nice. He's got Hydras out, which are not as fast as Marines and cannot stim. But, um, oh wait, that's a good question, actually. How fast are they on creep exactly? I'm going to have to uh, figure out their actual comparison to Marines. But... Mutalisks uh, continuing to poke around the perimeter, and I've got this third base up and running and um, managing to be behind in the harvesters, of course. Uh, so he's, he's doing a good job saturating. I think that my big uh, error here was I needed more saturation right at this base, um, and I am correcting that right now, getting six uh, drones, and I'm getting my own baneling nest. Um, and this is almost a Zerg versus Terran instinct. Um, where he, I know that he's just going to have these big balled up, you know,